S- murder of- <laughs> and bee stings. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode. <clears throat> Hi, guys. Of the Savage Podcast. I'm Daniel. I'm Rose. And we're, we're, your, we're your co-hosts today, guys. We're your co-hosts. Um, guys. It's Daniel's birthday in a couple days. He's having a meltdown. I'm not having a meltdown, guys, okay? <laughs> I am embracing the fact that I'm getting older. Okay. Are we? Are we embracing it? <laughs> and by embracing, I mean having copious yeah. amounts of alcohol. So if that's my embracing, then bring it on. We're going we're gonna to go to Houston for Daniel's birthday to we visit are. our friend Angela. Exactly. So it's going to be a great time. I'm excited. Like, I mean... I mean, you know... It's not the destination we're necessarily excited about. No, we're not really excited. It's about more the-, the company. Exactly. And also, like, where our friend is, they they have, like, a pool and stuff. Yes. So I'm just, like, and it's supposed to be, like, 35. Like, no, it's going to be very hot. Like, I mean, super it's nice. Houston, so it's going to be hot. Yeah. So we're just going to be, you know, in the pool. Yeah. Drinking some uh, margaritas, maybe. Margaritas. Margaritas. Oh, and uh, just chilling. Yeah, I mean, some of us are already tanned. AF. I know. I'm so dark. Like, how how did you get so dark I, all of a sudden? Well, first of all, guys, like global warming. Hello. I like know. May was actually very much like summer. Like summer here, like hot. Yeah, it's giving summer already, and yeah. it's like literally beginning of June, and already it's like 26 degrees outside right now. Yeah, which is very hot and not normal for where we live. No. Um. So, anyways, usually it doesn't get like this until like the end of June. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So this is like. Full on summer weather, so a little concerning actually. I know. In, I, the, in the actual summer, it's gonna be so hot. I know, not to be like a doom and gloomer, <laughs> but Daniel, we are. This is like what we're known for. I know the but, doom and gloom podcast. But my fear, because I feel like it, it seems to be, you know, like like when you think of like um, growth, and you're like something can exponentially yes. grow, where it's like two times two is four, four times four, and it gets bigger and bigger, faster and faster. Yes, this is what we're experiencing. So what I think is happening is exactly that. It's like, yes. you know, last summer was hot, but this summer it's double as hot. Yes. Then the next summer, double as hot as that. Yes. It's like a snowball effect. Exactly. Sort of situation. And as it rolls down the hill, it gets bigger and bigger exactly. and bigger. And I'm And once scared. again, guys, welcome back to the doom and gloom podcast. I know. <laughs> like part of me is like, I love the summer vibes. Like I just love I know, it like, like it's actually out. nice. But I cannot believe how tanned you are. I know. I'm so dark. It's because like, you know, when I go running is when I usually get like super dark. Have you been running a lot? No. <laughs> well, like, when we go to run club, I run. Yeah, outside. that's true. And true, some true, of true. us true. missed it last week and some of us didn't. That's true. That's so, true. And also just like walking outside, just walking, running, you know, yeah. just being outside. I'm outside and then I tan very easily. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like super tan. You're like dark <laughs> AF. This is like, I, mean, I, I think I look nah. You do. You think I look nah? I do. You look very nice. You got a nice glow. I mean, I still, it's its almost as, as dark as when I saw you in Croatia. Oh, God damn, Daniel. I was dark as hell. And that, that was like probably the darkest I've ever seen you. No. So one year when I was 19, I went to Mexico with my family. Mm-hmm. And this was like a time when I wasn't very, I was very careless about reapplying sunscreen. Yeah. So I would just like go, I would put on sunscreen first layer. Yeah. And then I just like go into the ocean and just wash it all off and then not reapply. Yeah. I literally became black. Oh <laughs> like God. I swear I looked my skin color could have probably like like I could have fooled people yeah. if they just looked at my skin color yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then obviously my face you know mm-hmm. looking Asian as hell mm-hmm. <laughs> that's very true Rose do you think I have a very Asian face I mean <laughs> can I tell that you're Asian yes well and apparently I do as apparently well you look half Asian well, according to some people I literally just went on a recent date <laughs> And the guy said, oh, "We're to talking me, about that, okay? Well, I'm not we're really, you know what I realize? We put a lot out there. We do during this podcast. Maybe too much. Maybe a little too much. Maybe I should read it. There's Maybe. too much information. God damn. Like I feel. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, no. Basically, the we were we were like walking and stuff, and the guy was like, so like I was telling him I'm from the UK, and he's like, yeah, but you're like like half like half Asian or something. That's right? so funny. And I was like, I just wasn't he like brown or yes. something? Okay. So I'm like, I, yeah. You get you get that a lot. I don't see it, I know. but you know. I look white as hell. 
Well, you know, half Asian, that's not, that's not, uh, that's much, that's a compliment. It is a I compliment. Think. Half Asians are very hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. God damn. I think the best combination is half Asian, half black. Oh. Oh, those Blasians. Oh. They got the best genes. <laughs> they do. Like literally. <laughs> they never go age. Mm-mm. I just, I so do. So I need to get with the black man. <laughs> I think you do, Rose. And then adoption is out the window because we got to procreate. I mean, you guys owe it to society. <laughs> exactly. You owe it to society. We need to make society better looking. Yeah. <laughs> I put full responsibility of Rose. If you end up with, well, a, with a black guy, I'm going to say, Rose, it is your duty to have to, children. To have children. Better yet, remember my dad's theory about uh, people on the other side of the globe. Yeah. So, so you- let me, re- for those of you that haven't heard my dad's theory, mm. <laughs> my dad comes to me a few years ago and he's like, you know, Rose... There, you know, you should marry a man from Argentina. <laughs> no, wait, what did he, yeah, he's like, because um, you basically want to procreate with someone that lives on the opposite side of the, of world. the globe to to you. Yeah. And he's like, and the opposite side of Korea is Argentina. I don't even know if this is true. <laughs> It's your dad's theory, though. It's my dad's theory. So yeah. I was like, well, Argentina, that ain't that ain't so bad. Mm-hmm. Argentinian men are pretty good looking. Hello. And if, if so, we have any Argentinian listeners, uh, so hello, Rose is Argentinian open to dating. Men. And if they're like black Argentinian, maybe that's like the gold mine, you <sighs> that's know? That's the gold standard. That's the gold standard. So Oof. guys, I'm now in search for a black Argentinian <laughs> man to marry and have children with. You know what we should start doing? Like we should start going like, because I feel like if there's Argent- there are Argentinians in Calgary. Oh, I've never, I feel like it's not a big thing. I feel like we need to start going to like Latino bars and stuff. Okay, should we start? Yeah. Okay, this weekend. Oh, no, we're going to Houston. This yeah, we're in Houston. We're in Houston. Okay. And then you're Latino gone. Latino bars. Then, yeah. The thing is, Latinos are gone. too cool for me. Like, I can't, you know, I feel like you can fit in because you're like, you kind of speak Spanish and you're kind of like, you like, you know, you like reggaeton. I like reggaeton. <laughs> I know how to move. I know how to move my hips. My hips I don't. don't I'm, a, you're, I'm like, I'm very stiff. I'm yeah. a very, you know, I'm like, woo, EDM. I like, I like to get down in the club, you know, yeah, I, like to I get my booty popping. I know. I need to learn. Like, see... Latinas, Latina women are mm. very like, you know, sexual. They're very, you know, yeah. and they know how to like move their hips like oh. Shakira, you know, mm. the hips don't lie. I, uh, not me. <laughs> so your hips do I can lie. do the K-pop dances. Yeah. <laughs> the very like choreographed, I like. nobody, nobody but you. I want. That song is like 10 years old. <laughs> it's like all I know. <laughs> Oppa Gangnam Style. Wow, why did I say that? Oppa Gangnam Style. So that's my type of dancing. I love it. Mm-hmm. So that's what you're going to bust out when we go to a reggaeton bar. A reggaeton. Maybe, you know you what? Know, I-, I do like um, reggaeton, but I don't know that many songs yeah i think you honestly i think you because it's a vibe like it's like it's a, very, a vibe the, it's a very like party vibe it is because all the songs like they'll often have this they don't have the same beat but they'll have like a very like consistent like yes it has a certain you, you know as soon as it's yeah, on yeah. you're like okay this is reggaeton yeah 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 Yeah, and there's some really like there I'll, are some good songs i'll send you my playlist i have a reggaeton well, playlist and i remember so the first time i was like really exposed to reggaeton obviously i've heard it before mm-hmm. but was when I was uh, in Cuba with my mom like many years ago. Like, yeah. I don't know, it was probably like 2018 or something. And I was like, damn. So I know a few songs from that trip yeah. that I, I still have on my playlist. But other than that, I don't know too much. Well, I, what I'll do, Rose, is I'll share... You'll send me the playlist. I'll share you share with you my... <laughs> reggaeton. My reggaeton playlist. <laughs> reggaeton. And <laughs> you're going to love it. it. Honestly... Okay. It's very sexual. It is. When I was in Spain, too, like the, some of the nightclubs that I went to when I was like do living there and stuff. they play reggaeton? Oh, so much of it. And me and my friend were like obsessed. Yeah. We were like getting down in the club, oh. too. I was like, yeah. It was so good. God damn, Daniel. I miss those days. I, I miss the days when I enjoyed clubbing. <laughs> yeah. I know it's weird because I don't really like like it anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, I'd rather I mean, be in a if patio. We were, if we were in Spain, oh, yeah. we, we would in... probably go to a, a club. Oh, yeah. 100%. If we were in Ibiza, we'd I... go to a club for oh, sure. you're right, babes. In Ibiza, <laughs> of course, we'd go to a club, innit? We should go to Ibiza. Uh, 100%. We could go clubbing. Anyway. That's, yeah. What happens in Ibiza stays in <laughs> Ibiza, innit, fam? Have you even been to you been? No. <laughs> You've never been to Ibiza? No, I haven't been to Ibiza. <laughs> you know, I cannot say. <laughs> I haven't been to Vegas. Wait, you of all people. I know. You are like a party animal, so I'm shocked that you have not, not anymore. been to I've Ibiza. Not anymore. Ibiza. Are you fucking joking me? No, I'm serious. <clears throat> you were just talking about reggaeton and how so, you love to go to the reggaeton clubs. So a bunch of my coworkers are like la- Latino ah, and stuff like this, and I they see. like to go. So I'm going to find out a night that they're going, and we're going to go with them. Okay, and then I'm just going to stand there and do my K-pop dances. Yeah, 
to reggaeton. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> well, it's funny because so I bought a hula hoop because I really want to do I want to learn hula hoop dancing. That's something I've wanted to do for a while. You want to be like one of those rave girls at the rave doing kind the hula hoop. Kind of, but I saw a girl, because um, I thought usually, yeah, it's like the rave, it's, you know, with trance music, house music, mm. um, but it also goes really well with reggaeton. Ooh. I saw a few videos of girls like doing, like doing hula hoop dancing to very reggaeton, nice. and it's very, very nice. Oh, it's so, that sensual movement, Rose. Yeah, that's going to be my new hobby. I have uh, too many hobbies and too little time. Yep. There you go. Story of your life. <laughs> anyway, shall anyway, we jump into the story? <coughs> well, before oh, we, we have jump, some shout outs. We have some shout outs, guys. Guys, we got two new patrons. Thank you so much for joining the mm-hmm. Patreon family. Let's yeah. say thanks to Kara and Ali. You guys. Welcome. Welcome to the Patreon family. If you guys want to join, it is patreon.com slash the savage podcast. And it is only as little as three dollars a month. Yeah. And you get ad free content. Every episode you get a week earlier than everyone else and you get a bonus episode every single month. Mm-hmm. So get ready for that. Yes. <clears throat> There'll be some ex- exclusive, some exclusive. Some major exclusives. God mm-hmm. damn. We got to think about what we got to do for June. <clears throat> exclusive. Oh, God damn, Daniel. When we going to do? God damn, we got no time. God damn. When, when? We'll we will discuss that. <laughs> we will discuss after the podcast. Oh my God. My life um, is in shambles. <clears throat> okay. It's summer. You know what? I stand by, I think I talked about this last year. Mm. I stand by my belief that we should not work in the summer. I think the summer should be off. It's too much. We're doing too much. There's weddings every weekend. There's vacations to go to. There's so much to do. There's time to be spent outside. Mm -hmm. And it's too much. I can't do it. But Rose, with global warming, soon it's always going to be summer. (gasps) So you're saying we should never work again. (laughs) That would be preferred. And AI can do all the jobs and we we get paid for it. Damn. Yeah, AI. You know what? Let's not go there. I know it's Let, scary. We, we've me. already done the doom, doom and gloom part of the podcast. We today. have. All right. Holy shit! What is this? So, this story comes out of South Korea. My my home country. Your home country. My proud home country. So, <laughs> basically, what happened is there was a a, a lady, a woman in a woman in, in yes. South Korea. I think I've heard of this. Who was a true crime fanatic? Sounds familiar. Um, <laughs> she was obsessed with watching true, true crime documentaries. Sure. She watched them on YouTube. Again, sounds eerily familiar. <laughs> um, and then I guess she took it one step further though. This is like, I mean, multiple steps further, mul- yeah. <laughs> not just one step further, multiple steps further. Yeah. So it sounds like she, a 23 year old true crime fanatic was arrested <laughs> in the South Korean city of Busan. Oh my God. On Wednesday, in connection with the killing and dismembering of a woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Police said that they believe the killing was done out of curiosity, driven by the suspect's desire to experience what a murder was like firsthand. So I guess she became really obsessed and... (laughs) Just putting it out there, guys, just because someone listens to true crime does not mean that they want to go and kill people. I know. This this is so true. (laughs) So this is not, uh, clearly there was already something in her head mm-hmm. that was a little bit, you know. Well, they, they say further on this article, she was kind of like a loner and she exactly. was isolated factors. from society and oh, there was like God. a lot of different, and, and, and that will make people spiral. You know, like if, if, like if you think about it, even during COVID when we were like separated from our families and stuff, well, not families, but like from our most people, yeah. you do kind of start to go a little bit weird. Crazy. Yeah. And if you were just by yourself, like if you were by yourself in your p- apartment, never interacted with people all the time, like you would get a bit weird. But would you, would you murder? No. Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. But so initially, so the, the name of this person is Chung. So initially Jung claimed to have killed the victim during an argument, but later retracted the statement when presented with contradictory evidence. So basically she said it was through an argument, but really she was just curious. Yeah. That's fucked up. It says, um, blah, 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 blah. They, they, this, and they said the police spoke, spokesperson suspe- <laughs> suspects the murder was premeditated and was driven by Jung's desire to kill someone. Say that re- again, Daniel. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it again. Say it again, Daniel. No. Um, Jung. 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 There you go. Jung's desire to kill, <clears throat> to kill so someone cute. for real after <laughs> she became obsessed with murder from TV programs and books. I, I, I think it's kind of crazy. An investigation of Jung. <laughs> Jung's, Jung. Jung. 
Jung's phone revealed three months worth of search history on how to hide a corpse. Oh my to God. The newspaper. The, 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 I, I, I have to put this out there though. Cause okay. I'm also one of those people that is like obsessed. Not, What's your crime? Not obsessed, but like I find it very interesting. Yeah. And, and why is it that we're so, because it's so, I don't know. I don't know why. I think I like part of me thinks it's because like, cause I remember we have like societal norms, right? Yes. And when things happen outside of our societal norms, we like label them or deem them as like right. something weird or whatever. But we do become fascinated because it's outside of what we're right. What, what is to. normal in society, right. right? So we're like, how could somebody do this? Yeah. And 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 we try to justify the behavior. That's why. Yes. Quite often they're like, oh well, they were a psychopath. They were this because they, they, you need to label it to to normalize it. Yes. Because you're like nobody in their right mind would do that. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, then you'd have to accept that human beings would do such a thing. Exactly. Right. That's the whole part of it is that that normalizes it in the context of what we how God we view damn. society. Oh, yeah. So do you think that true crime is a problem? Um, there's mixed camps on this. <laughs> I want to see. I wonder if there are studies on this because true crime is so popular now. Hugely you know, it's, popular. And it's become more popular through like YouTube, for example, yeah. because and that's where I usually consume all my true crime content. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, it was just documentaries, which, you know, fair okay yeah. but i also feel like maybe when we listen to too much true crime or or you know focus a lot on true crime then maybe it, it desensitizes people that could be a possibility because mm. they were like oh wow like somebody was dismembered and just like listening to that while i'm just like eating cereal or something yeah you know because i listen to this shit when i'm falling asleep <laughs> oh, God. that is creepy rose i don't know why that's next level because I would never do that. I know, I do this. I don't know why. Maybe I just like need someone to tell me a story <laughs> about you, how you know somebody murdered someone and, and dismembered, they dismembered them. them and like mul killed multiple people <laughs> yeah. and like it's pretty crazy. I think I think for me like it's just the I guess not a fascination but it's just like just the shock factor of like how did somebody do this? Like yeah. you know you hear these stories and you're like like this can't be crazy. You're like. This isn't exactly a murder story, but I remember that one documentary on Netflix about that girl that was abducted when she was like eight and she was held and that this guy had built, this is how wild people are. People are insane. This guy had built a, a, a kind of facility or kind of room in his house and he made it so complicated that it actually right. took about 20 minutes to unlock all the doors and right. latches and, you know, to get into this fucking room Yeah, and then trapped her in there. Oh my right? God, can you imagine? And she was in there eight years oh God. there's people that's been like for more than that I even know. which is so crazy crazy and then she did escape eventually but like do you know the name of this person uh natasha uh natasha okay. the, the, thing, the thing is there's a few stories like this yeah. so i can't exactly which is kind of fucked up but there's multiple stories like this where people mm -hmm. like you know kidnap someone and then yeah. like keep them in a dungeon but part of the, you know, part of the <clears throat> argument of people, like, you know, when the Jeffrey Dahmer um, Netflix series was released, like right. a lot of people, there was some backlash from victims' families and stuff. Yes. Because I think one of the issues, like, again, I think it's, it's in like interesting and I do find them interesting to watch and things. But one of the arguments against true crime documentaries is that quite often, especially for more for serial killers and stuff, it almost gives them a... Um, what's the word like uh notoriety yes you know it and gives like them, publicity exactly it gives them publicity and <clears throat> huge amounts of of awareness in society yeah you know like and it's like you and know, they become like kind of celebrities they do they yeah 100 like these big serial killers yeah like ted bundy ted people bundy. always like talking about how good looking he is and yeah. shit i'm like dude and he had like fans i know it's this, so fucked up we talked about this on another episode too like yeah. a long time ago but one thing that also really messes with my mind is how somebody can get arrested like a serial killer or something yes and then all of these women i what is wrong with women blow them up <laughs> i mean i guess i guess to to be completely fair i mean i've seen my dating options out there so <laughs> someone in prison doesn't sound that bad but this is like no. a weird phenomenon especially with women yes there's like a subset of women that are obsessed with these criminals i don't know it's like it's like the bad boy taken to the next extreme <laughs> Like, you know how it's like, oh, you like the bad boy. sociopath slash psychopath. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you? This is like avoidance attachment uh, taken to the extreme extreme. Yeah, maybe? because they, especially if they're on life sentence. Exactly. Because it's like they're going to be in prison forever. They're like, yeah. oh, great. My my type of man. Well, then they, they still get their conjugal visits, Rose. So. So how does this work? Because obviously they're like allowed to have sex. Yeah. 
like where do they fuck they i think they have like a conjugal is, room oh really is it called a conjugal room <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know. i've never I, slept I've, with anyone in yeah, prison so i've never reached out to an inmate but maybe I should start, you know? Hey, you know what? Maybe maybe, maybe they'll be like Tinder for inmates, you know? Like, I'll swipe through the inmates and see which one I like. It's so crazy to me. It's like some of these people, they're not even popular before they're, like, mm. arrested. And then they'll get arrested. And, the, and then all these women flock to them. Yeah. It's like, what are you... Women, guys, I know the bar is below the fucking seafloor. Uh, really but let's is. at least, you know, let's... <laughs> Let's raise it a little bit, you know? Oh, my God. Like, someone killed, like, 10 plus people. Maybe maybe they're not the right person mm-hmm. for you, you know? Probably not. A little concerning that yeah. you find that to be an attractive quality. It's just wild. Like, I just... It's so crazy. I need some more... I'm sure there are studies on this because mm-hmm. this is, like, a huge phenomenon. Yeah. Since, like, the beginning of time. It's like, like these women. And yeah. I complain about men, but I'm like, God, women are fucked up. I think everyone's society's <laughs> fucked up. Like we all, like guys, we've all had our bad boy era, right? Like <laughs> I remember, like when I was in I high didn't school, have a bad boy era. I really liked bad, but you didn't. Oh, you mean like oh, liking bad boys? Yeah, I thought you meant like I was a bad boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> like liking, like yes. I mean, of course, I, I yeah, of yeah. course. Well, like I grew out I of still it. Still, sometimes you oh, know, oh, me you're not fully out of it. No, I'm not fully out. <laughs> Do of we it. ever fully get out of it? No, I don't think so. I something about a bad boy, but anyway, no, no, no. like it's attractive when they when they come across as like a bad boy, but mm. then they're like, not that much, not that bad. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I see like, what you mean. You know, they come across as bad boy, but maybe they didn't kill people. Yeah. You know, maybe they're not a serial killer. So exactly. a little bit I, more. I draw the line at serial killer. <laughs> well, I think a line needs to be drawn somewhere, Rose. Oh, God. You need to draw the line, you know, like, yeah. And then, and then these serial killers as well, they get dubbed all these names. And I, again, it becomes this sensational yeah. thing. Like, you know, for example, the Ken and Barbie killers, you've heard of them. Yeah. They're Canadian. And like, again, they're known for being attractive. Yeah. And people, and I hate when people do this. Like, I get it, but also I hate it. Mm. It's so, the way that they treat these like killers that are better looking is insane. They're always like, oh my God, but they're so good looking. Oh my God, but they look like Ken and Barbie. How could they possibly? I'm like... How does it have anything to do with the crime? So you know, you know, they did a study on this. Yes. I, I want. I want. It, was it that show that we watched? Yes. It was like a so, hundred people yes, or something. It was yeah. This show that we watched. I don't think it was like a professional study. No. It wasn't but professional. it was basically just like an experiment. Yeah. Where basically they sat people down, and then in one situation they showed people pick. What, well, in both situations they showed pic- people pictures. Yeah. Of like criminals. supposed criminals. Yeah. And they said, okay, this person did this X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> How many years do you think they should get yeah. in prison? And in one one case, they showed really good looking people. Yeah. And in another case, they showed not so attractive people. And <laughs> the results were completely different. Well, and it, it was interesting because the results were that the good looking people could get away with harsher crimes yes. with lighter sentences. Yes. The less attractive people would do petty crimes and get larger uh-huh. sentences. Like it was like a really weird... Yep thing and it was consistent and it's crazy because it's something that you do without even realizing unconscious bias yes exactly yeah. so basically so, if we ever commit crime we'll just get two years perfect. slap on the wrist perfect <laughs> love that little slap on the wrist <clears throat> well they also say that good-looking people are no people think that good-looking people are smarter funnier all these things so which is not we, we've met a lot of good-looking people and that's not true <laughs> it's not true let um, me tell you yeah so I don't know. Mm-hmm. So if we do crime, people gonna be like, "How how that be possible?" Exactly. They'll think they're you know these beautiful people. They they shouldn't be locked away. Yeah, exactly. They should be out in society <laughs> procreating with black Argentinians. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what they'll say about me. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder if there are Argentinian men. I don't think I've ever met an Argentinian man in Calgary. I've met them like abroad. Mm-hmm. And they're very good looking. Some of that European colonization, oh, you know. <laughs> I've met a few Argentinians, guys. They got that mixture. Like they look kind of like white as hell, but also like a little bit more of a, you know, Latino flair. Sorry. Yeah. God, and the professionalism the, on this the, podcast, The unprofessionalism. Guys. See what I have to deal with on a regular basis? <laughs> Rose is now reading her messages. She's not even focused on the oh, God podcast. damn, I'll just be putting my phone on silent mm, mode. Thank you. All right, guys. So that's the unfortunate, very sad story uh, yeah. of some random poor woman that got killed. I know. Guys, stranger danger. Be careful, okay? Yeah. It seems like she met a random person 
and kill them. So please do not meet random people. Mm -mm. Please be safe. If you are meeting random people, meet them in public places. And if you start, if you're listening to true crime and you start uh, imagining yourself murdering someone, possibly, you know. Time to stop. Yeah. Put the, put the, turn the TV off. Mm. You know, watch something else. Okay. Or if you're like me and you watch, like there was a period of time I was watching a lot of forensic files and me and my me and my roommate at the time we were like basically it was quite funny because we were like you know what I feel like we should have a degree in this at this point because <laughs> we would be like we'd be watching yeah. we'd be like okay you need to test the the gun for the, the <laughs> gunpowder yeah gunpowder residue <laughs> you need to be doing this dusting for fingerprints in all of these locations uh, see if the DNA is a match between this and and then yeah. me and my friend are like we could be fucking detectives <laughs> you could but be after a while I did start feeling like a little bit negative like I just right. felt like. Because you watch so much of it, it started to become not normalized, but I was just like, oh my God, everyone's a killer, you know? And that's when I like had to stop for a little while. Maybe I need to stop. Yeah. Maybe this is why I'd be going through a dark time. God damn, you'd be dark as hell. <laughs> In more ways than one, not just, not just the tan. Not just the tan, not God just the damn. tan. All right, guys. So we've got another story. Probably one of my biggest nightmares of this ever happening. Killer bees attack 81-year-old man for three hours? Yeah. <gasps> so apparently what had happened is he um, was mowing his grass in his backyard. Uh-huh. And then I guess the bees started like coming down on him, like this flock of, or I don't know what it's called. Three hours? Yeah. Because what happened was, I guess he tried to run inside, tripped and fell. <gasps> no. And like broke his hip or something. Oh my God. So he was like stuck outside and the bees just kept coming at him <gasps> until somebody but saw him. How is he alive? I, like, wouldn't you die? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So he looks kind of like fine. <laughs> I mean, like, <clears throat> I mean, he's an 80 year old man. Yeah. 81. 81 year old man. So <laughs> lasted for hours. Could you imagine <laughs> you trip on your grass, you oh break your God. hip and you're just, just laying there as bees just, consistently oh sting you. I mean, it, it, if there's anything worse than death, I mean, that has to be it. I mean, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Because bee stings hurt so much as Have well. Have you ever been stung? Yes. Really? When? Multiple times. Re- multiple. What were you doing? I've been stung by bees. I've been stung by wasps. Why are you pissing off all the bees and wasps? I'm not. They just come and find me <laughs> and sting me. One Don't year. Don't they die after they sting you? Bees or is do. that oh, bees, oh, bees do. die. So are you telling me that he just killed millions of bees? Yeah. Well, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> They were attacking him. I, like, so bees die after stinging. I think, yeah. I'm or pretty is sure. it wasps? No, no, no. Wasps don't. Wasps so what's the, worse, wasp or bees? I feel like a bee sting is more painful, especially because they. I think their so stinger breaks off. Do you know off. immediately? Oh, I may have been stung, but mm. I'm not positive. Wasps are just more like they put like a little bit of venom in you and it still <gasps> hurts. But oh, but wasps can also bite you. They can like bite or sting. Oh, They're just like little damn. vicious little fuckers. But bees are important to the ecosystem, Daniel. Yeah, I mean, I believe so, so got, are wasps. Are wasps important? I think all animals or insects of some degree are. Well, what about mosquitoes? We, I, we don't, we don't stand mosquitoes. Yeah, but they are also important to are the they? ecosystem. Yeah. What about cockroaches? Important to the ecosystem. Rose. Are you just making this up? Well, no. Every, every, every like the thing <laughs> no, is, no. There are certain humans that aren't important to the no, ecosystem. Oh <laughs> well, we're not going. Th- we're not going down that route, Rose. But Actually, I, we humans, in fact, are very bad for the ecosystem. Yes, we are a cancer on the planet. <laughs> we are cancer to the planet. Everything yeah. else might be better. <laughs> But this is it. Like literally, we are the one of the only species that is literally killing the host that we're living on. Yep. We're the parasite. Yes, we are literally a parasite. Uh-huh. Oh, speaking of parasite, I want to watch that movie again. What Anyways, movie? Anyways, Parasite. Oh, God damn. Have you not seen it? You know, of course I've seen it. Oh, God damn, Daniel. You don't remember us having an in-depth... I almost disowned dis- you as a friend. Do you not remember us having an in-depth discussion about it, Rose? Oh, yeah. We watched it together? No. No. We watched, <laughs> okay. it, we watched it separately, but... Oh, what a, cl- what a movie. Oh, um, I mean, it's a classic. It's a classic. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Yeah, I think I want to rewatch it. It's on Netflix, I think. It is. I saw it come up on the mm-hmm. recommendations. Yeah. You know what else I really want them to come up with season two for? Squid Game? Well, yes, that's one. But also, remember Hellbound? Oh, yeah, that was good, too. It was so fucking weird, when but are, good. When are the season twos coming out? I don't know. I want to see season two of Squid Game. Guys, is Squid Game coming out anytime soon? Like, I we don't should, know. We, I check miss, on your I, phone. Daniel, Please check for us. We, God. The viewers and uh, everyone, <laughs> the listeners want to know when Squid Game 2 is coming out. Okay. I think the guy is like probably having a meltdown because because of how good Squid Game One did. Yeah, because imagine, imagine if you release something and it went so viral that the entire world watch it, watched it, and then now you have this such, so much pressure. Uh-huh. Oh, so it says we can expect it to land late 2023 if not early 2024. Okay. And the thing is, the thing with Squid Squid Game though is I'm not sure how they're gonna do it because. 
I think one of the reasons why it was so popular in the first season is because of that shock factor of us not actually understanding what was happening. Yeah. And because of that, it made it so interesting to watch. Oh, for sure. Because it's like none of us expected what was going to happen in that first episode. That first episode (laughs) was fucking crazy because we're all just kind of like, okay, they're going to play this game. Like what's going to happen? And then even the players, I remember when the first player gets shot and they all... You'd be spoiling things. Everybody's seen Squid Game, Mm -hmm. Rose. And and literally, pe- the the even his friend was like, "Oh, like get get up! Like, what are you doing? Like, this is just a game, you know." I know. And then when he realized, he's like, "Holy fuck!" And he starts running back to the other people and gets <gasps> shot. And then everyone's like, starts screaming and freaking out. I was like, "Oh my! What the fuck oh is my going God. on?" Se- seriously, I was like having heart palpitations. Yeah. And oh, some of the some of the games they played had me at the edge of their seat. Oh my- they were all like so bad. I think the worst one for me was actually I don't know. They were all really bad. Yeah. But one of the worst ones was the was the one where you could fall like the, the glass. with the glass. <gasps> <gasps> oh, <laughs> that was the worst for me. Oh my god. That. But I also also tug of war was pretty bad. Oh, that oh. was. I mean, they were all really like just yeah. bad. Um, I kind of want to rewatch it now. Okay, oh, damn. Why you don't- Mm-hmm. You're gonna watch a lot of TV tonight, <laughs> tonight Rose. Apparently Ain't nobody got time. Squid Game. You're gonna watch. No, I don't uh, have time. I gotta work. Oh, God damn. And you gotta <laughs> anyway, watch. Anyway, so this poor way. man, this poor man got uh, stung by bees for three hours. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but like, how is that even possible? I don't know. Um, and then yeah, thank God he survived. Yeah. Looks like he broke a hip. He looks decent. Like he yeah. doesn't look like he's you know. It also gets sadder as he was as he was laying on the ground. He tried to call nine one one, but ended up typing his the wrong passcode so many times his phone got temporarily locked because you know guys when you like go into your phone if you type the passcode too many times it like locks you out for like 20 minutes and he's probably like fuck my fucking life as the bees are like stinging him he's like what the fuck if i ever have a bad day Mm. i will think of this man yes and i will feel much better about my day yeah (laughs) because unless you're being stung by bees for three hours Mm. after fracturing your hip or breaking your hip Mm. and then unable to call 911 because he locked himself out of his phone. I'm sorry to laugh, but like, oh my God. So then he also, he recalled a certain distress signal using the wilderness and fired. I guess he had a handgun because, you know, it's in the US. Right. So a lot of people have handguns on them. Yeah. And he uh, apparently shot that up into the air three times to see if someone would like hear the gunshots oh and come God. get him. And the whole time he's thinking, Lord, I need your help. <laughs> Please help me. Three hours after the attack began, his prayers were answered when workers from a nearby machine company noticed him while returning from their lunch break. Where was he at? Like at his house? Yeah, I think he was in his front yard. Does he not have neighbors? Like another reason why we shouldn't live so far away from people. Exactly. It's like, imagine if that happened, you know, somewhere where there's lots of people, then people would have seen him. He he wouldn't have been attacked for three (laughs) hours. And you would think the bees would like stop. I know, I'm like, aren't they tired? Yeah, Like, like why do they keep coming after him? Exactly. What did he do? One of the employees jumped over the fence to try to rescue him before the bees began stinging him. Oh my God. Together with his colleagues, including one person who was a beekeeper, he tried to protect his face while waiting for assistance. In the end, firefighters were able to disperse some of the bees. God, there must have been so many bees. It must have been crazy. Was this like a bee farm? Like and they, re- they removed hundreds of stingers from his body. Oh my God. Honestly, you guys, if you're having a bad day, just think of this poor man and tell yourself you are grateful for not having experienced such a horrific. Exactly. You that is traumatizing. You haven't locked your, um, you haven't <laughs> locked your, yourself out of your phone. Oh my God. Like that. Oh my God. It's like one of those things where it's like something bad happens and then it's like a consistently, like you just can't catch a break. Like it's sh- more shit keeps happening. Oh no. Anyways. Like I just can't imagine just being relentlessly stung for three hours. I honestly, I'm shocked he like survive this you know what i'm thinking though and again i don't know the whole like how many bees there were but maybe it was like there was a lot of them but they were coming down a, a few at a time to sting maybe them, you know what maybe. i mean like right you're probably right. it wasn't like, like they're like, not gonna be like immediately all yeah. of them all at it once. wasn't like thousands of bees sure. just on his body so can you die from i think being you, stung? yeah i think you can i think if you get stung right. too because the thing is <clears throat> when you're stung your body reacts right like it like right fights the it's like a po- like a not a poison but like, like a toxin or something. something yeah and your body will fight it right so like if you have too much of that your body right. probably goes into stress mode oh and like, god um there's actually a really sad film um about, about someone that died from did you, did you ever see my girl no <gasps> oh god my girl yeah it's like an old classic it's so good oh wait I may, maybe i've seen it mm-hmm. i don't know anyway yeah but anyway she dies from bee stings oh my god yeah or he died. No, mm. her friend dies. He's like he. Okay. She like forgot her like special ring or I can't remember what it was, but she forgot something near this beehive. And this. Oh no. Her friend is like really cute nerdy boy. He goes to get it for her and he oh. dies. Here's the thing, guys. 
it's it's so scary because again once again welcome to the doom and gloom podcast mm. it's scary because one little thing could go wrong in your day and you could just die yeah <laughs> like it's fucking crazy like oh my god like so one little thing my uh my friend was telling me this about this like cave like somewhere in the in utah okay apparently it got closed and it was called the nutty something cave or whatever okay this man goes to like hike in this cave and yep. there's a part of the cave that like gets really narrow that you like go through okay so he was like going through this cave and he ends up getting stuck oh my god because it's too narrow and he gets stuck and people are trying to get him out. So they like are crawling into this okay. cave, but it's like barely your own body length. You know what I mean? Like, right. so people are trying to rescue him and h- the way he was stuck, he was kind of like upside down. Oh so my he God. had all, all the blood like <gasps> rushing to his head and he was there for like hours and he ended up dying because they couldn't get him no, out. Yeah. And then, no, no. and then the I thought he was going to get rescued. No. And then the worst part is they still couldn't get his like body out of the cave. So they decided to seal off the cave and he's just entombed he's just in there. Buried in there? Yeah. Oh, oh my <laughs> God, that is so traumatizing. Right? I was like, oh my God, because I was like thinking about it. I was like, like Okay, guys, if there's a cave and it's it's a small opening, mm-hmm. don't go in there. I know, do not. Sometimes people have a death wish. Oh I my know. god. Ooh, like I, I, I I'm already a little bit claustrophobic. Oh my god, I can't believe he died. That's so sad. I know. Stuck in a dark cave, hung, hanging upside down. He's probably down. just like waiting and waiting and waiting to be like well, rescued. Well, people people got to him and <gasps> were like grabbing his feet and trying to pull him out and How stuff. How did he get in there that deep though? I think it's because it was like maybe on a slope, so it was kind of like he kind oh, of he was as he was trying to like leave. As or- he was going down, it just like the gravity pulled him down more and then he got <sighs> stuck where he couldn't get back up. Oh my god, no. Could you have, like I'm Daniel, that's traumatizing. It is like it's giving me heart palpitations thinking about it. Anyway, I mean, clearly we're talking about some really, you know, lovely stories oh, today, Daniel. I, I love your choice of, choice of stories and you tell me that we're not the Doom and Gloom podcast. <laughs> we aren't. We're going to move <clears throat> on to a different story that impacts people like you, Rose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bitches? No. <I'm> no. <laughs> So I guess recently France has now passed a law to regulate paid influencers. Interesting. Yes. So apparently I mean, we're already regulated. Yeah. No? Well, I think it's a bit of a gray area. So France has cracked down and said there's a few areas. I'll, I'll go further into the article because I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what it was, but you can no longer promote cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Oh, so you're not allowed to at all. Nope. And you're not allowed to promote um, online gambling and a few other things. In addition, there's more the, rules to the other rules. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's new. Yeah. I think that's new. And the more rule the other rules were, um, if you're doing an ad and I think this is kind of like starting to become standard now you have to announce or you have to say yeah. that it's an ad. That's already a ca- the case. Exactly. And you have to disclose if a filter is used. So if you use a filter, oh! or something like that, you have to disclose. Wait, seriously? Yeah. That's the new law. Yep. Yeah. And on top of what? it, yeah, on top of it. So you have to disclose if you are marketing something like Coca-Cola, or yeah. something like this. You have to have like a disclaimer that says like, you know, the importance of like maintaining a healthy lifestyle, <gasps> you know, like, Oh my God. So, you know, like for example, like here's a perfect example of, you know, the advertising industry is very heavily regulated. So if you're promoting beer, you have to say, please consume responsibly, right? The ads. Well right. now influencers that are marketing <clears throat> certain products that aren't as healthy or deemed to be that way. Ooh, interesting. They're going to have to start putting those disclaimers. God damn. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a little bit of a gray area, is it not? Because, you know, you could say, oh, you know, for example, I don't know. What if I was talking about Beyond Meat? Like, I'll be like, oh, here's a Beyond Burger. And like, Mm -hmm. one could argue you have to say, oh, you know, processed food is not healthy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like, how far are we going to take it? You know, where, where is the line drawn? Exactly. Because, you know, some makeup is toxic. So we could talk about toxic toxicity of makeup i think i think it's within reason like it's like it's like it's the same i I think what they're trying to do here is they're trying to make it standardized in the influencer industry as it is with advertising well ain't nobody talking about how uh commercials are airbrushed so why do we have to disclose filters that's that's another thing that's Mm -hmm. a good question Mm -hmm. you know they don't have to say oh how are they going to regulate that that's that's going to be the hard part i think it's like come on now Mm mm-hmm I think that's taking it too far. I understand like maybe talking about, you know, 
you know, beer or, you know, if you're promoting vaping or something, yeah. then obviously, yes, maybe we need to add in some disclaimers. Mm-hmm. But filters? Yeah. I don't know. Because here it says, so this new law makes it unlawful for influencers to create paid content promoting, oh, cosmetic surgeries was the other one, cosmetic surgeries, online oh. sports betting sites, or financial products like cryptocurrencies. Damn. Mm-hmm. France. Influencers and companies caught violating this law could face up to two years in prison. <laughs> And a three hundred thousand dollar euros in fines, and their ability to pl- post on platforms potentially be revoked. Oh, so you could like lose. God damn! So I, I guess I better uh, cancel my cryptocurrency you, uh, <laughs> sponsorship. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so until the until that this law was passed, I guess there was no law in France directly regulating commercial activity on social media. Oh, interesting. So they left leaving consumers vulnerable to scams and frauds. Um. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah. So influencers will now be required to label all paid content, adding extra disclaimers if the content content has been filtered or edited. Oh, okay. So that makes a little bit more sense. So if yeah. it's paid content, mm. then it makes sense in, in some ways, right? So for example, if you're promoting a uh, foundation, like makeup, right? Mm. Sometimes when you're promoting this foundation and you're saying, oh, this is so great. My skin looks so smooth, Mm. but really you're using a filter. Yeah. So maybe that's what they mean as in, you know, you can't be dishonest about, you know, the, the, the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I think that, that, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And also says here, there, there's the part I was talking about before. For example, post promoting sodas or processed foods will have to include a message reminding consumers to undertake physical activity (laughs) similar to how it would be done on television. Okay, I'm sorry. Does that really happen on television? I don't know. Maybe in France. Maybe in France. Because France has different laws, right? So like... Yeah, that's true. I do feel like in North America, I feel like our our, um, advertising... We we don't give a shit. No. We're just like, let's all be unhealthy and gross. It's actually wild because they have a lot of things in Europe that are meant to protect consumers more right. so than here. Oh yeah. One of the biggest ones that I thought was really interesting from working in the UK versus being here is the data protection, right? So right. in the in Europe, they have a lot stronger data protection laws right. for consumers. One of the laws, so they have a whole thing called like GDPR, yeah. which is like the kind of standard of um, standard of care, if you will. And it, it kind of stipulates like what's allowed or not. One of the biggest differences is like in Europe, they're only allowed to hold data on you that they actually need to do business. Right. So, right. you know, like, you know how some, some companies will get all this additional data on you that they're not using for the service they're providing to you, but maybe it's, they want to promote other services or whatever, Yeah. but they don't actually need that, that <clears throat> data to do their job. Yeah. That's like illegal. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And okay. And that's why a lot of companies really struggle, especially if, like a European company is doing business with a U.S. company or something, right? Because U.S. data law is a lot more lax. Yeah, they it's don't a give a more, fuck. Exactly, it's more like, <laughs> oh, you want the data? Here you go. Um, Here's everything about this person. Exactly, including what they've clicked on the last yeah. twenty hours. Yeah. Um. So a lot of European companies will will put strong barriers in place where they're like, we will not allow the data to be housed in the U.S. or right. to be housed in these other countries that have laxer laws. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, mm. I mean, Europeans, man. One step ahead of us. I know. God damn, I miss Europe. <laughs> Should we move to Europe? I want to live back in Should Spain. Should we move to France and then I have to disclose everything? Mm-hmm. Or well, we could go live in Spain, Rose. Spain. We should live in Spain. It'd be beautiful, Zay. <laughs> you can you can still work. You love Spain, don't you? Oh, I just I love the I, guys. I just love the. I think it's not just Spain. It's just like European <laughs> lifestyle. Yes. Like just like I know the social aspect of it. The living around plazas and like the being able to travel to different countries oh, so easily. I just oh, I know being able to not have to drive everywhere. <laughs> literally, like you could take a train or plane to literally. Maybe we just everywhere. belong in. But Europe's kind of like it's it's all fucked up. The whole world is fucked up right now. I know it's so true. Mm-hmm. There'd be a lot going on. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so this is what happens. Okay, that's interesting. In France, and maybe maybe more countries will start following suit to you know increase the standard of care that influencers will be responsible for, God damn. including you, Rose. <laughs> you be a target. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. God damn. But I wonder also too how it works. Like, for example, if you're like an influencer and you're marketing something, and it's like because YouTube is like, your videos are seen all over the world. Yes. So how do they regulate that? You know what I mean? Because people maybe in France if, could be watching it. I think maybe if you are like where you're Fran- domiciled. Yeah. So yeah. like where, where if you are like a France creator or like yeah. you live in France. Yeah. I feel like that's the only way that they could enforce it. Yeah. Um, because I mean, of course, people people 
people in France can watch videos from everywhere. Exactly. But it's only, I think, toward French creators. Who knows? Yeah, this is what's crazy with the world now. It's like everything is so global, I right? Know. Like if you put a video out on YouTube, anybody in any country pretty much can see yep. it. Yep, yep. I like know. it's not it's not crazy it's wild it's wild technology is it, wild it's even like our podcast we have listeners from all over the world <clears throat> hi listeners from all over the world hi there, where you is there's, there's all over roses mm-hmm. we got listeners in south korea god damn we got listeners from japan god damn we got listeners from <laughs> denmark god damn we got listeners from the uk god damn we got listeners from south africa oh Okay, I'm going to stop now, guys. Was, there was a lot of countries on the list, and I was like, just going through them all. Maybe you know? Argentina? No. No, no listeners from I'm Argentina. I'm kidding. I'm pretty sure there might be maybe one or two. Mm, there have been some Argentinian, probably women, listening to the podcast. <laughs> let's let's be honest here, our demographic. Have you been to Argentina? I have not. You have not. Have you? I, I did actually technically go into Argentina. You dipped a toe in Argentina. Yes, because when I was in Brazil... I went to uh, Foz de Iguazu or the mm. Iguazu Falls. Ooh. And uh, originally I was just going to see the Brazil side, but people said I have to see the Argentina side. So mm. I went into Argentina. So technically mm. I have been on Argentinian land, Ooh. but the only thing I saw was the Iguazu Falls. Yeah. Which I really, was beautiful. I really want to go to, I do want to go to Buenos Aires. I think it'd be oh, a really cool city to go see. It's supposed to be insane. Yeah. Like it's going to be like, it's huge. Like it's yeah. like, I don't know. Like I think like. It's I, like huge. Like so many people live there. Yeah. But I just think it would be very interesting. And actually, there's a lot of places. I also really want to go to Patagonia. Uh-huh. So, and that's like the really right. south of, south yeah, of yeah, Argentina. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be amazing. <clears throat> like, I, yeah. When we going to go, Daniels? God damn. I don't know. Rose, like, I, I can't go with you because people going to think we a couple. I and mean, I can't find my black Argentinian man to marry. Too late, Rose. What do you mean? People already think we're a couple. <laughs> Everyone, all no. across the world. Anyways. People be clipping our videos where you said, we fucked. <laughs> <laughs> And then they're like, I got scared. I think it was like, they even like time stamped it. I clicked. I was like, what is this person talking about? Click, click, click on it. And it goes, you go, we fucked. <laughs> <laughs> As in you and I fucked. Yes, I died. Oh my God. I died. But it, you weren't saying like, we fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were saying like, we're fucked. I was like, saying something. I was fucked, saying like we're fucked. Society, yes. But you just said, we fucked. God, people are insane. Jesus know. Christ. I think they were doing it like as a and, joke. And we're such a small podcast. Imagine if we were bigger, like the amount of the clippings we would get. Oh. People would just dissect everything we oh, say. Oh, yeah. They would like take the video. They would do snippets. Yeah. And there'd be like remixes of like, us on look, YouTube or look something. Look what these dumbass bitches are saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be famous for I know, that in, reason. In some ways, I'm like, do I want the podcast to get bigger? I do. That's, but then other I side, know. I'm like, oh, God. I know. And like all, uh, us complaining about all kinds of shit. And then I, imagine we're like <laughs> like complaining about men. <laughs> oh, God. And then we get a boyfriend. And, and then, then we're the, dating. Yeah. <laughs> Not us. God damn it. I know. <laughs> Then we're dating, hey, Rose. Oh. <laughs> Guys, damn. once again, I have to say it once, one more time. We both, unfortunately, like Mayans. Mm-hmm. Not for much longer, Rose. <laughs> Actually, I might turn into a lesbian soon. So just put that out there. Okay, what's next? Amazon ordered to pay more than $30 million dollars. What, what is wrong with Amazon for privacy violations related to Alexa and ring devices? Interesting. So basically, when, basically, what happened? is Alexa even even successful? I don't know. So apparently there's like the Amazon Echo Dot, which I've never even heard of this, I've which was a speaker it. specifically designed for children. Oh, so God. <laughs> what has happened was, I guess, um, it was alleged by the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, alleged that they violated child privacy laws and deceived parents by keeping their keeping uh, for deceived parents for years, keeping their kids voice and location data recorded by its popular Alexa voice assistant. Oh, my God. Yeah. So the thing is, the thing that's crazy is like, if you think about it, like Amazon has so much information on us. So much. And it, 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 it does beg to question going back to like European laws and stuff. And like, you know, what, what, what am I trying to say? How much data do they actually need on us? Do you know what I mean? Well, like, but you know, they say it's like these big companies, the data is where it's at. Like, yeah. sure, they sell things. Yeah. But really, because some, some companies, I'm just like, I feel like they just exist just to collect data. Yeah. Because they'll give away free free things and yeah. they'll be like, just join and put in all your information. And then later you sell that data and that is what's valuable. Yeah. You know what is so crazy now though is how targeted and crazy the ads are I know. like for example my mom was looking for like this kind of thing for the backyard like a kind of shed or whatever okay. 
I was at their house. So yeah. we're all on the same Wi-Fi network. Yeah. I never once typed any of this shit into uh, my phone. Uh-huh. My mom was looking at it on hers. Next thing I know, I'm going on my phone. I'm getting ads for these oh like garden shelters. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? I've never looked this I up. I know. It's so crazy. But it gets, I, I can take it even one step further. Yeah. At work, I ordered this. So I ordered this like special light for my bedroom. Okay. It's like a, it was really cool. It looks like a tree. I think I've, did I should show I, you I it? think you showed me the picture. So it's like a tree that goes up the wall and yeah. it's like branches with like little like lights on it. Yeah. So it's a, a light feature, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, I love a good light feature. <laughs> you love a light feature. And yeah, I do. Anyway, I was talking to someone at work about it, just telling them about it, right? <gasps> oh, it's the voice. Yeah. I just told them about this, this tree thing. I can't remember what it's called Twinkle or Twilight Tree or something like this. Anyway, long story short, told my coworker the next day, my coworker comes in and she was like, oh my, oh my fucking God. God. She's like, look what ad showed up on my Instagram. It was that fucking tree. <gasps> So they are listening. It's true. I was like, how, but how else would that have happened? Like, unless my phone had previously searched for it and it was close no. enough to hers to like, I don't know because she never looked for no, it. No, they are listening. You know, like, cause this was, this was always our question. Like, are they actually listening yeah. to us? Well, we it's know that they confirmed. are because for example, right. your phone right now, Rose, if you were <clears throat> like, if you had Siri on and you were like, Hey Siri, right. it's listening to your voice. Like it would. Right. It knows. So basically it's listening right now. Always until it hears that. And that's even with like Siri, Alexa, all of these things, like the device doesn't turn off. It's always on listening for when you say those words. Yeah. Right. It's not like it all of a sudden just turns on because you say, Hey Alexa, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So always on. It's always listening. Yeah. God damn. So our lives are being recorded. What was the, what was the, what was the company? The, the tree lights? What was the name? Let's talk about it so that. I'm going to test this theory out. Mm, God, what was Twinkle. it? Twinkle. Twilight. Oh, Twilight. Fuck, what was it called? I, I need to, I'll need to, you know what? Let, we'll test this after. So I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone. <laughs> okay. But I won't connect no, your wait, Wi-Fi. Okay, yeah. I'll do it on my cell phone okay, network. Okay, got it. I'll get off your Wi-Fi. I'll look this up. I'll tell you what the company was called. Okay. And see if it shows up on your phone. Okay, got like, it. Like it's fucking crazy. And this, this shit really scares me. And another thing that they're also, I guess they're also getting sued um, for privacy violations involving its doorbell camera. So they had a doorbell camera called Ring. <laughs> and I guess there was some people. I, I don't remember exactly. What. Hackers were able to access Ring accounts. Mm-hmm. So basically, Amazon's home security camera subsidiary let employees and contractors access consumers' private videos and provided lax security practices oh and God. enabled hackers. This, you know, what this reminds me of. What? Do you remember the story we talked about? This is oh, like, the guy that was like, like looking at inappropriate videos. Basically. There was a guy in the U.S. that was installing home security systems yeah. for families. Right. And then for like... Years. Like not even just a few, like seven years. Oh, Imagine you have your camera set up <gasps> and, and you find out later, seven years, someone had been watching you. Oh. You and your partner having your intimate times. Yeah. Literally watching you walk around your house naked <gasps> or in your underwear. Which like, is me all the time. Exactly. God. Like it just, it creeps me out. But if you think about it, like, because I want to get a doorbell cam for my house. Cause like my door goes to the main street. So I'm like, right. I kind of want that. Like you you wouldn't really need it as much cause no. you're in a con- like condo, but like, it's, it's kind of like nice to have that. But at the same time, I'm like, if I have this connected to the Amazon or whatever network, it's like, that does mean that somebody could hack it. The, the possibility is there. Right. And then they could not that like, there's interesting things happening at my house, but like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they have that ability and you would just feel so violated. Oh, I can't. Oh God. That's so disturbing. Like imagine you had a whole security set of cameras and you knew that some guy <gasps> was like watching you for years. Ew. Yeah. God, people need a life. Like seriously. Anyway, so Amazon, once again, you know, always doing good things for the world. I mean... <laughs> <sighs> always just you know at the top of the ethical mm. practices just like all all of these large companies yeah. it seems you know it's great it's like i these, love it. it we did talk about this before but like again all of these big companies like doing mass layoffs when I they're know. when they're still wildly pro- more profitable this I year know. than they were last year and it's is like jeff bezos still the ceo of amazon i think he is is he you want to google i don't know i can't remember off the top of my head guys i don't remember if it's him or someone else although speaking of jeff bezos yeah funny story um, I don't even know how I got into this, like w- this, um, rabbit hole or wormhole or whatever you want to call it. But I was like w- looking at, well, I think it's just cause like, as you get older, like as for, especially for men, your hair starts like thinning out a little bit and stuff. Oh, he's no longer the CEO. It says he's the executive chairman. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, continue. Um, but you know, like guys hair starts thinning mm-hmm. out and stuff. So I might've been like looking at some products to help thicken hair and sure, all this. Sure. 
And there was like some, you know, that were like talking about like, oh, um, you know, this is a miracle drug and whatever else or miracle okay. things for hair. And then all in the comment section, they're like, guys, if Jeff Bezos, who's a multi-billionaire, <laughs> is bald, there is no hope for us. <laughs> no matter how many of these dis- fucking no. products that you buy. I disagree. I know. Uh, the reason why I disagree is okay. because Jeff Bezos, sure, he's a multi, multi, multi-millionaire, one of the richest men. Billionaire. Billionaire, sorry. One of the richest men in the world, if not the richest. He was at some point. At one point, yeah. But his looks is not what got him to where he is. And clearly, his hair had fallen out a long time ago. Yeah. So, and also, it's just something that, like, some people, they just don't, they just don't care about it. I mean, mm-hmm. look at, look at what, uh... Mark Zuckerberg and like, like, look how he looks like he doesn't look, you know, he doesn't particularly great. Yeah. But he is a multi multi billionaire. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the expectation for women and men are different. Actually, this reminds me of this TikTok I saw a while ago where basically it's a video of a guy that's like talking about his like hair regrowth journey. Now, yeah. I don't know how accurate this is. Like, I don't know, you know, is mm-hmm. it possible? Po- maybe. Do you yeah. think so? Yeah. So like some guys, like they have their hair falling out and then they start doing all these things, maybe scalp massage, maybe whatever. And it starts to regrow the hair back. Mm -hmm. So she was responding to that video and saying, you know, I love this because as women, we're like, she's like, no, she she said, she said this. She said, I have no sympathy for men (laughs) that lose their hair and don't do anything about it. Or like, basically she's saying it for women, we constantly have to worry about how we look and we yeah. constantly we are putting in so much money we're putting in so much effort we're putting mm. on sunscreen where we're putting on like 10 different serums and then a moisturizer mm. and then a night cream and and then we got like hair serums and we have we shave our legs and all this shit right to like prevent aging prevent all these things yet men sit there do absolutely nothing and then complain yeah. <laughs> about losing hair which the thing is of course it's inevitable sometimes right it's not going to be something that you can completely stop yeah but what she was saying is like until you do something about it you can't complain Mm. well it's like it's like that's the thing some of it is like genetic like i even know a lot of of it it's very genetic yeah some like some of the hair even the like the the top brand stuff that's like supposed to be really really good it only works for like i think 70 percent of people you know what i mean so there is that 30 percent where it's like even if they tried like i think it's like rogaine or something like that i've heard of that even if they try it it still doesn't work for them right and one of the annoying things is about like some of these like hair serums and stuff mm. is like they might work like right like you might it might work but, but you s- can't stop exactly using you it. have to continue to use oh my it God. it's not like it's not like you and then does it fall out yeah so if you stop no. using it after a certain amount of time it starts to just fall out god damn mm-hmm. well i mean there's a lot of factors right so there's mm. diet exercise lifestyle genetics and the potential products that you're putting in your hair so Basically, her point was not that she should demonize people that are losing their hair. Obviously, yeah. that's quite, you know, that's tough for a guy. It um, is. It'd be tough. It'd be tough for a, us men out there, you know, Rose? It's so tough for the <laughs> men out there. <laughs> In this world created for you, it's so tough for you. Guys, I love, I, you know, honestly, one of my favorite things to, is to set Rose off on that journey, you know? <laughs> Of, of, of male bashing. Um, <laughs> I think it's Rosa's favorite pastime. And I kind of... No, I don't I kinda, bash I kind of poke the bear because I'm always just like to throw those like, ah. I, oh, I don't God, bash I, men, but you you like to poke the bear. As I do. You're like, oh, it's just so hard for it's guys. It's tough, guys. It's a <laughs> tough world for us out there, you know? God, I see sometimes these videos of these guys that are like, you know, like the Andrew Tate, similar mm, people. Oh, God. And they're like, you know, women just have to coast through life. I'm like, what world are you living in yeah. where women are just coasting through life? I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I honestly, the the rise of these like misogynistic men on uh, social media, it's wild to I me. Know, like we had wild. Andrew Tate. There's another guy. I think I might have sent you his videos before. He's really attractive, like South African guy, oh. and he like and he's really good looking, and which is such a shame and because he's, he's like such a an idiot. I don't think I've seen it. And he talks about like you know he's he's become very successful. He's like a multi millionaire oh. through I don't know businesses and stuff. And he the way he talks about women, guys, I'm just oh. like. This guy is so cringy. Like he starts talking about body counts and all this stuff. Oh my and god! And there's that whole like lately this whole body count obsession. Oh my god! Where guys are like yeah, if she's bro, if she's had more than like seven dicks in her, then I <laughs> I don't want to be there. You know, like and I'm like you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like okay, so are you are you, what about if the tables reversed? You yeah. know, like if you slept with more than seven people. Yeah. Does it, you're saying the girl doesn't want to be with you, but it doesn't work that way. No, you know? not for them. It's so Ugh. annoying. Ugh. I I just think like they, it's like. If you have a preference, fine. Mm-hmm. But like, keep it to yourself. 
Exactly. A lot of guys don't care what your body count is. Most guys, in fact, do not give a shit. Like I have literally, like I mean, <laughs> never you? asked anyone. I because I, I honestly don't yeah, care. Why would you ask people that? I, I honestly would it like, matter? Like maybe if I'm dating someone for a while, then I might be like, oh, like how many Just partners out of have curiosity. you had? Yeah, out of curiosity. But if they're like, oh, you know, as long as it's nothing like insane. But like okay, if, so let's say you were falling in love. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, you've been dating this guy for some time. Yeah, you've fallen in love. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's great. Mm-hmm. And then you ask, what's your body count? And he goes, 200 people. Mm-hmm. What would your reaction be? Well, at my age now, that's not that many. <laughs> especially in the gay world. And, well, and especially <laughs> also if you like, if you're single, like, you know, 20, like, because 200 people, let's say, you know, let's say over start 10 years over 10 about, years. Yeah. It's 20, not too bad, 20 actually. people a year. It's like maybe one more, a little bit more than one a month. That's not that bad. <laughs> you know true. what I mean? Like, that's just my perspective. But again, like if they turn around and we're like, 10,000 people oh I might be a little bit like okay that's a lot like Ooh. were you working in the sex industry or something like yeah. what what is it like that seems like a really high to me but like yeah. again I guess I, 200 isn't too much no at the end of the I day mean, it's a lot but it is at the end of the day it's like I just really don't give a fuck like that much it really doesn't matter at yeah. the end of the day um I think what matters is you know if it's a partner you yeah. know how your partner is now versus well and what matters is how they are in bed. Well, with after you. 200 people, hopefully they've had some experience. I know. Oh God. <laughs> like I was like, but oftentimes I find that like if, if guys, cause guys love to be- brag about how many people they've slept with. Mm. And I'm just like, I don't know how you think this is, you know, a bragging sort of thing because yeah. so basically you just, just banged anything and anyone. Mm. And then, most of the time these guys are probably not even good in bed. I know. They're just like going in and just putting that, just doing it just to increase that number. Exactly. It's like, I met this guy traveling Mm -hmm. and me and my friend. And I remember like, I was like 23 at the time. Right. And innocent young Daniel. Oh God, I miss innocent young Daniel. <laughs> I mean, I was a fucking drunken hot mess, but, <laughs> but like, you were I'd, I'd be an innocent angel. You'd be an innocent boy. And basically this guy that we met at the hostel, I think he was like 25 or 26 and we were just like happened to be walking. We we're all out partying and stuff. And then we, I don't know how we got on the topic of body counts. Oh God. But his was like ridiculous. Like he's like, oh yeah, I've been with like 400 or 450 people. Oh my God. And we were like, me and my friend afterwards, we were just like, we chatted about it. Like it was kind of mean of us, but we were like talking about it later. And we're like, clearly like, cause he wasn't the most, not that, not that it looks matter that much, <laughs> but like he wasn't the most attractive guy. And yeah. we're like, my friend's like, if he slept with that many people, that is concerning to me because obviously his standards are very low. <laughs> Like the like he he just clearly like to your yeah, point yeah, like yeah. slept with anybody at that would go home with him and also it's it's not even enjoyable because you you know usually you you kind of want to want to be with someone more than one time yeah for it to be even remotely well, this good. is the thing the, the first time you sleep with somebody yeah generally it's not gonna be like mind blowing yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean it's a little bit awkward you're especially like, see- from the female perspective yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of like uh, I'm it just is. saying that. You know, I'm I'm a virgin, so mm, I know, I know, Rose. One day, one day you'll lose your virginity, um, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not. You know, people are fumbling around. You know, it's awkward. Bits are going places. <laughs> you you don't know each other's rhythm. Mm-hmm. So, and basically, when someone tells me that they have such a high body count, I guess like my idea would be like, so basically, you couldn't fuck a girl more than one time. Mm-hmm. Like so, nobody wanted to fuck you more than once. Which is which is concerning. <laughs> That's concerning. Because yeah. let me tell you, like if you if a guy slept with a girl and she liked it and mm. wanted to do it again, he would for sure want to do it again. A hundred percent. Yeah. Unless he was like just going for body count. Yeah. Anyway. Men are simple creatures, Rose. Uh, <laughs> simple, are they? Simple but complex. <laughs> simple but complex. <laughs> like an onion, you oh, know? Oh yeah, right. God There's damn. no layers. It's okay. all rotten inside. No, I'm just kidding. God damn it. We're like a rotten onion. <laughs> and on that positive note. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode of the podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Hope um, you enjoyed our little yeah. our fun, fi- fun filled our stories. Our fun filled stories, as of always, murder of and <laughs> bee stings <laughs> and data breaches. God damn. Once roses. again, guys, I think we might have to change the name to Doom and Gloom Podcast. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Let me know. Mm-hmm. Let us know in the comment anyway, section, guys. guys um, a little reminder, mm-hmm. we have our trips coming up. <gasps> so soon. Shortly, it's, we are going to Thailand and Bali in August. It's like two months away, Rose. It's like two months away. and That's so cl- Oh my God, it's so <clears> close. I know. And uh, the signups will close, I think, a few weeks beforehand. Mm. So definitely, if you are interested, 
check out those links uh, in the description or in the show notes if you want to come with us and yeah, meet yeah. us in person. And um, once again, if you want to join our Patreon, you get bonus episodes every single month and you get ad-free content and every episode a week earlier than everybody else. So yeah. definitely, definitely check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Mm-hmm. And what else, Daniel? Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe, guys. Show us some love in the comment section. Yeah. Also, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to hit follow. Then you get updated as soon as we release new episodes. And of course, give this podcast a rating. Five stars, please. Yeah, five um, stars. Tell us how much you love it. Tell us how, how much, much you, you love the doom and gloom podcast. Yes, how much you want more. <laughs> and also, guys, if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section, let us know if you are li- loving Rose's new name for the podcast, doom and gloom. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet, so (laughs) we'll see. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.